at the Adapt Design step, pop-up notifications may appear during various stages of design adaptation. You can always choose to let the software make corrections automatically, or you can do it by yourself and press Accept. The software indicates the problem area when pressing the I icon. By enabling the distance map, you can see where potential contacts will emerge. Note that the distance map only shows the proximity of the antagonist. The bright red lines indicate contacts. It is recommended to add some material to the locations where the intended point contacts are supposed to be, until you see the red collision lines. That means that you have established a contact with the splint surface. The contacts will be adjusted in the next steps. They can be left strong. The numeric values depict how much contact violation occurs. In the posterior areas, in this example, the buccal cusps of the lower jaw molars and premolars will dominantly be in contact with the splint surface. A standard sculpting operation is advisable at this stage. Use the Smooth tool to level sharp edges or transition lines. Also, you can remove material in all areas that are not relevant for the splint type. This will help with the adaptation stage later. In this case, the proximity of the lower jaw lingual cusps to the splint surface is reduced to avoid interferences during articulation. In this case, we'll show you a reductive technique for sculpting the functional surface of the splint with the help of the virtual articulator. To achieve canine guidance, a bulk of material must be added on the splint surface around the antagonizing canines. Use the distance map and visibility of the antagonist as a reference point. The idea of the added material is to provide support for the canine guidance, both in lateral protrusion as well as protrusion. You can add material by using the Add tool as well as the Morph tool. You can inspect the sufficiency of the added material by doing the following. In the Articulator Control Panel, Enable Guide by Incisal Pin, Enable Protrusion, Retrusion and Opening, Enable Lateral Otrusion and Mediotrusion, and Run Articulation. You should see blue marks indicating lower jaw canine collisions with the splint surface in lateral Otrusion, and black marks indicating lower jaw canine collisions with the splint surface in protrusion. If you need the extension of the protrusive and lateral otrusive movements to be of a particular length in millimeters, you can use the articulator control panel sliders as a reference. After adjusting the sliders in the articulator control panel, it's important to reset the articulator to default to regain the set therapeutic bite position. To inspect the sufficiency of material in protrusive jaw movement without the visual interference from the lateral protrusion pattern, you can, in the articulator control panel, disable lateral protrusion and medio protrusion and run articulation. If the extension seems insufficient, you can always add material and rerun the articulation until satisfied. It is now necessary to adapt the splint surface to achieve canine guidance. A bilateral geometry resulting in the canine guided disclusion can be created with the help of the virtual articulator. To do this, make sure that lateral protrusion and medio protrusion is locked and ensure that retrusion protrusion is unlocked. Then run articulation and adapt the design. You should also see that the centric contact points have evened out because of the design adaptation. Following this, make sure that Guide by Incisal Pin is disabled and ensure that Guide by Design is enabled. Check that both Lateral Otrusion and Medio Otrusion and Retrusion and Protrusion are unlocked and run articulation to see the dynamic occlusion and what the contact patterns look like. Lateral Otrusion and Medio Otrusion contacts are blue and green and Retrusion and Protrusion contacts are black. Note, 
you may find that the canines are either not guiding the laterotrusion and mediotrusion or the protrusion in the desired way at first. You should see at least one canine forming the protrusive contact pattern. To gain a bilateral opening pattern in a similar strength, you can add material gently in areas where the contact pattern is weak or lacking. The other way to achieve bilateral dynamic contacts is to gently remove material from the side of the more dominant contact pattern. Run articulation every time when adding or removing material to see the effect on the contact pattern. When you are satisfied with the protrusion pattern and the disclusion resulting from it, start working on the laterotrusive disclusion. To refine the canine guidance in laterotrusion, depending on the case, you'll need to either add material gently to the laterotrusion slopes bilaterally until the desired contacts pattern is achieved. Or you can use the smooth tool to adjust or sculpt an existing contact pattern to your liking. It is common to see the lateral incisor forming a contact alongside the canine. This can often be discluded by adding volume to the canine's laterotrusion slope. The wear, position and buccolingual inclination of the canines directly affect the dynamic contact patterns. Run the articulation after adding material to see the effect on the contact pattern. It is essential to re-establish the static contacts after the canine guidance is modelled, as it is easy to accidentally add material on the static contact points. This will result in the interocclusal clearance increasing unintentionally. This affects the functionality of the splint by discluding all other contacting teeth from the splint surface in the therapeutic jaw position. Repeat the following procedure whenever material has been added or removed in the proximity of static contact points to make sure no unintended material is affecting the splint function. To do so, enable guide by incisal pin and make sure that guide by design is disabled. Then lock both laterotrusion and mediotrusion and retrusion and protrusion. Now enter a value of 0.01 millimeters in the adapt design field and run articulation. Then press adapt design. To check, you can now set the adapt design value to zero and rerun articulation. You should now see collision lines of equal strength from all occluding teeth. After establishing the static contacts, again, you'll need to disable guide by incisal pin, enable guide by design, unlock laterotrusion and mediotrusion and retrusion and protrusion and run articulation. You can add or remove material to strengthen or weaken the contact pattern induced by each antagonizing tooth. Smooth out or remove any contact patterns resulting from unwanted teeth. The key point to remember is that it is a process of adding, removing and smoothing along with running articulation to assess the impact that will help you with adapting the design to your desired outcome. Running the articulation after each sculpt action gives you immediate feedback on the effect of the changes made. To check if the splint is going to work properly at the final sculpt step, you can also toggle the guide by design button on and disable guide by incisal table. Now the movements will be guided by the splint's geometry. By enabling the distance map, you can see the distance of the antagonist from the splint surface. You can now check whether the posterior disclusion is guided by the canines in laterotrusion and protrusion in the desired way. Remove excess material in all areas that are not relevant for the splint type. For example, reducing the volume on the palatal and buccal aspects will reduce bulkiness and may be more comfortable for the patient. When satisfied with your design, you can move further on. 